In this video, we're gonna get right down to it to talk about different ways that you guys can sell to your customers for business to business selling. And we're gonna go through a bunch of different techniques. So stay with me till the end to figure out which one would be best for you and your team to utilize in terms of selling and getting more closed deals done. One of the ways that you can sell to your customers is uh, consultative selling. And consultative selling is a customer focused business to business sales approach. And this positions you as a sales representative as an actual trusted advisor with your actual customers or, or prospects. In that whole entire sales process, you are looking at a customized, tailor fit solution. So in this approach, everything is centered around the customer themselves and what their needs are and what their pain points are and what their problems are. And then in a consultative selling approach, this shifts the focus away from what you're actually selling, whether it's your products or services features or your services benefits, rather, or instead, it focuses on your customers' needs. It's customers' open-ended needs. So you have to ask your customer open-ended questions, which will allow your customer to answer in full what is going on in their current processes. In addition to this, you can also look at it from a perspective of building a rapport or a relationship for an eventual sale to happen between you and that potential customer. So it is you tailoring a, a, a solution through not product pushing rather than solution selling. So you are looking, listening, actively listening and figuring out what is the best approach to take for this specific customer. Also, it is a very unique approach in every circumstance because every customer is gonna have a different set of requirements or pain points that you have to consider uh, in, your, in your entire um, approach. So the consultative sales approach, you're gonna do your research. You're gonna ask questions, typically open-ended questions. You're gonna listen actively. In addition to all of this, you're also gonna inform collaborate, suggest, advise, consult your customer if you get the point what I'm trying to say here. And then eventually what's gonna happen is if there is a good fit, if there is a combination between what they're needing and what you're selling, if, if there's a bridge that can be crossed, that's when there's a mutually beneficial relationship formed and you guys can start um, you know, having them use your services or your product, whatever that may be. And in this consultative selling approach, it, it can be very effective in generating sales, cross-selling, and also upsells as well. And consultative selling can actually take longer time to master and implement, primarily because you're actually listening and you're taking your time to understand your customer and your client in that respect. Another type of selling is relationship selling. And in relationship selling, this is a sales approach in which you as a sales representative prioritize your relationship with the actual buyer above everything else. So it is completely customer centric and it's the opposite of transactional selling. And in this approach, it primarily gives you benefits in the long term. So it's a long term customer loyalty potential. There's also an increased customer lifetime value because you're servicing them for longer. And also it's a positive word of mouth referral type of approach because they're gonna look at you also as a trusted advisor essentially. And they're gonna say, hey, you should buy from this individual. And of course, another benefit is the repeat business opportunities that are gonna come from this as well. In addition to this, in addition to these two that we've already touched base on, there's also solution selling. And in the solution selling approach, this is a sales methodology in which you as a salesperson are actually diagnosing a prospect's problem. And you're offering specific and often custom solutions. And this will then look at, your customer will look at this as you selling them something that's unique to the customer's needs. And solution selling is all about solving a customer's problems as completely as possible. And this lets the customer's pain points, challenges, and needs steer the actual sales process itself, okay? So this solution selling approach 
<clears throat> you're going to research in the beginning, you know, research companies that will uh, be struggling with a certain pain point that your specific product can actually um, sell on or actually, um, in other words, um, convert. In addition to this, you're going to qualify these potential prospects. So you're going to make a contact with people and learn more about the decision making unit of that customer. And in addition to this, you're going to then have an open ended questions to uncover the cause and the magnitude of the problem for the customer. And you're going to then look at how can you add value? How can you add uh, a value to the buyer's journey, essentially, as they're looking for a solution to their um, problem. It could be through content, it could be through educational material, it could be about you selling a perspective to the customer that they otherwise wouldn't have in the first place. In addition to this, the selling approach after these four steps, so the prospecting, the qualifying, the discovering and the adding of value will lead you to the presentation. So you're going to look at a custom tailor fit solution presentation to solve their pain points and their business challenges. And then the, the, the last part of all of this, the last uh, process approach will be the close. So you're finalizing the deal and agreeing on mutually beneficial terms in that whole entire process. <clears throat> Another way to, uh, to sell is social selling. So this approach is primarily becoming more popular and it's for a good reason why. Okay, first of all, from a statistics perspective, 78% of social sellers outsell peers in the industry that they're in who don't use social media. In addition to this, social sellers achieve 66% greater quota attainment than those of the traditional techniques, traditional selling, which is kind of just like, if you can imagine air duct cleaning, um, cable TV selling, that kind of stuff, where it's just hurry up and buy, 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 buy. There's really no listening. There's no rapport being built, okay? In addition <clears throat> to this, there's also a 92% um, statistic that business to business buyers are willing to engage 92% of the time with sales professional who is known industry thought leader, okay? And also as early as 2023, just last year, an estimated 5 billion people use social media across the world. So social selling offers you as a salesperson a great opportunity to demonstrate thought leadership and also to interact with buyers in a more personalized and slightly less uh, formal way in essence. And of course, with over 1 billion users on a um, on a platform like LinkedIn, social selling is an easier way to make new connections and generate new leads for yourself. And a lot of that can come through just organic um, content making and creating. Okay. <clears throat> so in addition to social selling, there's also value based selling. And this is a sales approach that emphasizes and offers value proposition. Okay. So in this respective approach, sales representatives who want to master this type of approach need to learn how to communicate their value proposition online, in person, or maybe even over a phone, over a phone call. So value selling sales representatives need to understand how to create uh, a desire for their actual service that they're selling or product, for example. And in a value selling approach, sales representatives should be ready to pretty much hit a, a, a pause on a sales opportunity if the actual buyer themselves isn't demonstrating that they're fully ready to commit at that moment in time, okay? Another way you can sell is transactional selling. So transactional selling is not a typical sales approach in business to business sales. Um, this approach typically involves quick, uh, one-time sales, which are often in settings like retail, car dealerships, things of that nature, okay? So in a transactional selling method, the focus is primarily on the product or, or the, the service itself. It primarily revolves around features, benefits, and pricing, and it involves pitching and persuading the buyer into buying that one-time transaction. And also it's a short-term transactional mindset, 
okay? So that's something to consider, uh, depending on, again, what you're selling, what your thing is that you're selling, okay? Another, th another way to sell is the soft selling method, okay? So the soft selling method uh, primarily is a sales approach in which the sales representative specifically avoids pressuring the buyer into considering an actual purchase. So sales representatives practicing soft selling are encouraged to typically answer questions, make recommendations, and even further educate the buyers. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you should offer your opinions or try to entice or persuade uh, them to buy, the, 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 the customer to buy essentially. And in this process, you should do your research. You should be personable and build relationships. You should definitely ask thoughtful and engaging questions. In addition to this, you should also actively listen. You should provide value if it is asked of you to do so. And also give your prospects space, time to decide whether or not what you're selling is the right fit for them, okay? So that's soft selling. Another approach is of course the opposite of that and that would be hard selling. Now hard selling is the opposite of this and it includes a considerable amount of pressure from you as the salesperson. And in this sales approach, it, it's often used when you're wanting the customer to buy your, your service absolutely immediately. So it's a direct approach. It's high pressure to purchase your product or service. There's less personalization in the approach. So it's more or less the traditional annoying salesperson type of approach. Its main focus is primarily the sale and that's it. And of course it uses a, a relational uh, type of, or a rational, excuse me, type of approach, okay? So you're saying, well, this is why you should buy our product because it's the best and nothing nothing compares to it, okay? So it's primarily just driven to just hardball the customer into deciding to take your, uh, take your uh, service. Keep in mind that this hard selling tactic can definitely sometimes feel very aggressive, but there are certain types of customers or customer segments or sales scenarios in which this approach actually may be appropriate and you should consider using it depending on your industry. So look at your industry as a whole and really see, is this something that could benefit me because of what I'm selling, what the product or service is that I'm trying to push onto my customers. After this, another approach you can look at is the guru approach. And in the guru approach, it relies on you as a sales representative and your ability to connect more with the buyer's logic than their actual emotions, okay? So with this guru approach, you as a sales representative, let the product or the service that you're selling kind of do the talking for you, okay? So this is very effective sales approach for target markets that do a lot of their own research or for highly technical products. Now, the buyer personas for these uh, who respond to this type of approach are typically calm, rational individuals and may actually have an adverse reaction to emotional sales tactics. And sales representatives who actually want to become successful with this guru approach should practice customers, uh, should practice uh, sharing their uh, ex expertise and needs to be able to demonstrate influential thought leadership in their actual uh, industry themselves. Sorry, my kid just walked into my room here. So sales teams can adopt strategies like hosting webinars or workshops for actual prospects and customers. Now, as these offers uh, offer great opportunities to showcase industry knowledge and establish credibility, you have to really look at this. Is this the right approach for what I'm trying to sell? Okay. Baba will be with you in one second. Okay. Now, in addition to all of this, um, there's another way to sell also. It's the SNAP selling technique. Um, it essentially stands for simplicity, in the valuable, in the valuable, alignment, and also priority. So this helps you as sales representatives keep the customer's needs at the forefront throughout the entire sales process, okay? And many representatives use this sales approach when they know that their buyer is busy and that they need to be efficient, 
okay? So this keeps the sales process simple. It's being invaluable to the, to the buyer, right? Almost like they can't even make the decision without you. In addition to this, it, al it always aligns uh, with the buyer's priorities. And also it's raising the right priorities that make it easy for the buyer to say yes, okay? So in this type of uh, approach, sellers connect with buyers efficiently and also effectively. And in this approach, the sales rep treats the buyer as an equal, identical, okay? Emphasizing respect for their time and expertise as well. And they share a mutual goal of solving the buyer's problem as efficiently as humanly possible, okay? Another approach you can take a look at is the target account selling approach. Now, target account selling is a business to business sales approach that encourages you as representatives to focus your efforts on high potential and high value accounts. And this approach requires sales teams to do extensive research on the best fit prospects before they even initiate an actual outreach. OK, now sales teams can identify well qualified accounts by creating and assessing them against the ideal customer profiles, okay? So in this approach, you will look at an, an ideal customer profile. You look at the details about that company and uh, what would benefit most uh, from your product. So how could they benefit most from your pro product? But the research behind it is primarily looked at, you know, what is it that your what is it that your target profile is of your customers? If it's a small medium business with fewer than 200 employees, but they're growing quickly, maybe it's revenue of less than 500,000 as an example, sales engagement budgets of 5 to 10,000. It could be that they're you're, you're looking at a specific geographic area that you're trying to sell to or even the needs uh, or it, that the customer needs the ability to add many new users as the company as the company grows. So you're looking at what is that customer's profile and is this the right fit for what we're selling either as a product or service, <clears throat> depending again what you're, what you're selling in that respect. Another approach is the medic approach. Um, so the medic approach is um, a, prop, a popular acronym uh, for sales approaches and it's metrics, uh, economics, buyer, decision criteria, decision process, identify pain and champion, okay? So when you start, the process is first the metrics. So what metrics are your uh, potential customers uh, using to measure success? Where do they even currently stand? What is their current situation? And where do they want to even end up in a month, month or quarter or year, right? So you're looking at a long-term plan for them as well. Once you've established that, then you go down to the economic buyer. So who are the authorities to make a purchase even? So you're doing your research to figure this out. Then you're looking at the decision criteria, okay? what factors are most important for that specific buyer as they make their actual decision. The next is the actual decision process itself. So this would be something like what steps are involved in deciding whether or not to purchase a specific product or service. After this comes the identifying of the pain points. Okay, so what pain points or challenges are the prospects currently facing, okay? In addition to this is the champion approach, okay? So this is uh, the, the last step of this medic approach. And this would be looking at who will work internally to actually encourage the team to purchase uh, this specific approach, okay? So after all this, obviously you understand that there's a variety of factors to consider when you're trying to choose the right sales approach, right? It includes the team skills, it includes what industry you're selling to, it includes the preferences and needs of your target market, it includes the specifics of your products or services you're selling. But the sales approach you choose must meet the needs and preferences of your target buyer. At the end of the day, you're selling, you're the seller. Okay, so a sales representative's job within any approach they choose is to actually help the prospect understand in full their actual problem, their issue, and come to an understanding of how to actually solve this. 
And in reality, most sales teams choose a mix and match approach, right? A balance when it comes to sales approaches. And some work better than others for certain reps, buyers, product services, or the stages of the sales process, right? So flexibility in your approach is key. You have to allow yourself to adapt on the fly as well, okay? And there's many ways you can track all of this, whether it's just traditional old school ways of Microsoft Excel or using some kind of um, you know, customer relationship management tool or relational ma management tool. But there's many ways that you could uh, look at um, tracking your success in the type of approach that you choose. And then realize that for your specific industries or target markets, you will be able to highlight through that data collection which approach is the best approach for what you're selling and how you're going to go about it. Okay. Now the right sales approach can definitely make a huge difference in small business sales uh, performance and also overall success. Okay. So the most successful sales approaches are ones that have actually been implemented, tracked and tested over time to meet uh, the needs of your target market. Okay. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you stuck around till the end and have taken some notes about how you can sell to your customers. Please give this channel a like, a sub subscribe. We do talk about a lot of things um, in, in the industry of logistics and trucking, but also uh, in sales and best business practices for any type of business that you're running. So thank you very much for your time. And um, take a look at a bunch of different videos we got on the on this on the channel itself. Thank you. Bye bye.